Um, I just want to start out by saying that when I found out that I had the opportunity to give um, this introduction to this guest today, my first reaction was an overwhelming sense of pride that our Congresswoman took a break from one of the most important Senate campaigns in the nation to take time to share this with us today. And my second reaction was a feeling of honor because I'm honored to introduce this amazing woman to everyone in this room. For many of you, this may be the first time you will have the privilege of meeting this Congresswoman in person. Uh, many may have seen her on the news, commercials, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, or out in the state meeting with students, organizations, and businesses. Personally, this will be my second time meeting her after I sat in a room at Hannibal, Missouri last year with about 50 wide-eyed young students who were inspired and invigorated by her passion for the right of young people to have a stake in the political process. I'm not here to introduce to you a woman that is just another politician in Washington. I'm here to introduce to you someone who is a friend to everyone in this room. Claire grew up as a fourth generation Missourian and went to high school and college in Missouri. And like many of us in this room, she worked as hard as she could to afford her education, working as a waitress for six years to support herself through college and law school at the University of Missouri. After graduating, she followed her passion for public service and has served the citizens of Missouri in multiple capacities. She worked her way up from assistant prosecutor to Jackson County prosecutor as a Missouri state legislator and our statewide auditor. And as of recently, she has served as a first elected woman to represent the Missouri and the United States Senate. In the Senate, Claire has been a staunch supporter of legislation to make attending college affordable through preserving low-interest student loans and Pell Grant funding for students who may otherwise be unable to afford a college education. Regardless of where you come from or what your neighborhood was like or how much money your parents make, I know that Claire believes that if you work hard, you should have the opportunity to attain an affordable education. She knows our capabilities should not be undermined by dollar signs and that our chances for a better life should not come down to who has the greatest financial means but by who has the innate desire to succeed. Just like Claire, I'm a student who has to work four jobs to get through college to pay for my education. And as someone who has had to take out over $10,000 in federal student loans, I know the opportunities I have been afforded would not be possible without people like Claire in Washington standing up and fighting for every one of us. So I'm proud to stand here and say that this woman is truly a hero for every student in Warrensburg and this country. So please join me in introducing our United States Congressman, Senator Claire McCaskill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, a really good job. Thank you. Thank you. Right. That was a great introduction. Thank you, Amanda. And um, she can write. <laughs> and by the way, that's important, all you students, learning how to write. Um, one thing that is uh, interesting to me as we interview lots and lots of applicants for my Senate office, a lot of the best and the brightest want to come to work on Capitol Hill. And invariably, many of the ones that look great in terms of their resumes, we end up not being able to hire them because they don't write well. So I know all of your professors were probably telling you that, yes, you need to write another paper. And you're going, really? I've got to write another paper? Keep writing those papers. It's important. I, it is great to be here today. Thank you for welcoming uh, me to this campus. Uh, we are traveling the state this week, working very hard, trying to get the word out on college campuses that this is a huge election for you. Probably the biggest election that you may have uh, in your whole life when it comes down to preserving the middle class in this country. Uh, the surest ticket I know, guaranteed ticket to the middle class in this country is in fact a college education. It is. Um, absolutely a slam dunk that you will be part of the middle class in this country and maybe beyond but certainly part of the middle class in this country if you get your degree and really if you look at why we have been envied by the rest of the world yes it's because of our freedoms yes it's because of our open system of government but it's really about our standard of living because you see every country has rich people and every country has poor people but there's a whole lot of countries that don't have much in between. In our country, we always have. And we have grown and strengthened that middle class through the expansion of educational opportunities in this country. If you look at the first GI Bill, I was proud to be a sponsor of the second GI Bill, but if you look at the first GI Bill and what the men and women did um, around that college education after World War II and what they did for the middle class in this country, they really set us apart from the rest of the world. 
And only in America was it so common that you would have two cars, that you would have a washer and a dryer in your house, that you would have enough money to add on a small addition, maybe buy a bass boat, maybe a small cabin down at the lake, take a vacation every once in a while. That was something that the rest of the world said, gosh, I really wish we had that kind of vibrant, consuming middle class that really was the rock solid foundation of our stellar economy. And it continues to be the most important piece of our economy. So that's why the position of my opponent is so hard to understand. How many people in this room are going to college right now either with a federally backed student loan or a Pell Grant? And how many of those same hands would stay up if I ask you if you have a job? Yeah, so I, I'm obviously none of you are working very hard. I'm kidding. Um, most students who have grants or federal loans also work. I did, and I think most students do. So it's not as if students are getting these grants or loans and putting their feet up and saying, you know, bring me another beer. Uh, students are doing everything they can to make this affordable, to make sure their debt load is not too much, and to try to get through college and get out into the workforce in a way that makes sense for our country. My opponent wants to end Pell Grants and end any federal backing of student loans. There are over 300,000 young people in Missouri alone that are attending college right now because of federally backed student loans or Pell Grants. That's 300,000 young people, the vast majority of which could not go to college without that help. And what would that do to Warrensburg? What would that do to Maryville? What would that do to Kirksville? What would that do to Springfield and Columbia, Jefferson City, Cape Girardeau? I don't need to tell the people in Warrensburg how important this university is to the economic activity in this county. Talk about an engine. So the notion that we would all of a sudden turn off the ability of all of these young people to get these loans and get these grants makes absolutely no sense to me. But it does to Todd Aiken. He wants to end all federal involvement with education, K through 12 and higher ed. No more Department of Education, no more school lunches, no more Pell Grants, no more student loans. And I think that should be a non-starter with most Missourians. Now, what would happen if Todd Aiken's position prevailed, if he became a United States Senator and his position prevailed? Who would go to college? I've had three 17-year-olds. I wouldn't loan money to any of them. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine the high school graduate whose family doesn't have money, whose family can't underwrite the cost of tuition and books, and room and board, I'm trying to imagine that young person walking into the bank and saying, I've just graduated from high school. I have no work history. I have no credit history. I have no marketable skills. Will you give me twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to go to college? So of course the bank is going to say no. That 17-year-old is not a good credit risk. The only reason these loans are occurring is because the federal government backs them. And the vast majority of young people pay these loans back. So it's a great investment to have that backing. But banks are not going to take that risk. And so who would go to college in America? Anybody? Yeah. Wealthy. The wealthy families, their kids would go to college. And maybe a few star athletes, because they'd still want to have football programs probably. And maybe a few rock star academics that could get scholarships from the individual universities. But the vast majority of the young people that are going to college in America would no longer have that opportunity. That door would be slammed shut. And that, ladies and gentlemen, would be a huge mistake for the United States of America. It would remove us from that special class of countries where we have a middle class that is growing and that can compete on a global basis because of the quality of the educated workforce in this country. That is a sure ticket 
to a race to the bottom that we could possibly win if we slam that door shut. So that's why I'm getting around this week, to make sure people understand that many of the positions my opponent has are for, so far out of the mainstream, it's hard to figure out what he's thinking. It really is, um, because this obviously would have a devastating impact on our country. And I think that it's one that I hope will motivate you to get involved in this campaign. Uh, we need lots of help. We need lots of phone calls made. We need lots of doors knocked on. We're hoping that you'll all volunteer. And we certainly hope, if you're students, that you're registered to vote and that you have made arrangements. If you're going to vote absentee somewhere in Missouri, that you've made arrangements to get your ballot. Uh, that if you are going to go home for a weekend between now and November, that you arrange to vote while you're home for the weekend and that you don't miss this opportunity to vote in this election. It's really, really important. I am uh, happy now to answer questions on any subject, uh, whether it's student loans and uh, the affordability of college and why it's important for the federal government to stay involved and continue to make that investment or any other topic that you all are interested in. It is great to see you all here today. So questions. <laughs>